So if you've been following my cha YouTube channel recently, you will know that I have adopted the ketogenic or low carb diet as a lifestyle. In fact, I've been making a number of videos cooking ketogenic low carb meals while I'm out here in the woods. Well, one of the things that I've discovered is that it is not easy to find foods that don't require refrigeration that are also ketogenic in nature. So most of the meals that I've made have been made with foods that I pretty much have to use on my first day out in the woods. They may last another day, but not for very long. And I'm researching and looking for foods that will last much longer without refrigeration that are also lightweight, another part of the challenge. Well, I came across a product that meets much of those requirements, so I reached out to the company to see if they'd be interested in sending me some samples, and they have. And that's what I want to share with you today. This is the Keto Brick. If you're interested in learning more about the Keto Brick, keep watching. So what is the Keto Brick and why is it something that you may be interested in taking a look at? Well, let's do a little history on the Keto Brick and, and how it came into being. So the Keto Brick was developed by a young man living in Arkansas by the name of Robert Sykes. And Robert and his wife, Crystal, are both on the ketogenic lifestyle and they're both professional level bodybuilders. And Robert was looking for something that he could throw in his, ba or in his gym bag and take to the gym that would act as a meal replacement. So he started experimenting with a number of recipes and it was important that it was shelf stable something that wasn't going to melt while it was in his gym bag so he came up with what is now known as the keto brick but people were starting to take notice of it and finally he was encouraged to go into commercial production and so therefore the background now what is the keto brick it is basically a high calorie ketogenic friendly meal replacement or energy bar High calorie, each of these things are 1,000 calories, and that's a full meal uh, for anybody. So there are a number of flavors, which I'll go over in a minute, but I will open this one up in a second just to give you an idea of what it looks like and what they taste like. Uh, so let's do that. Let's take a look at what the flavors are. So there are seven flavors that they have available. And this one is the mocha cream, and again, it's the only one I haven't opened up, and there's a reason for that I'll share with you in a minute. They do have one that is peanut butter flavored. They have one that's cookies and cream, one that is a chocolate peanut butter cup, another one that is chocolate malt, another one that is toasted almond, and the last one is coconut cream. So I have tested out each one of these for, fla for uh, flavors to see what they taste like so I could report back to you, all except this one. Now, why did I save this one to last? Well, it has to do with what these are made of and uh, what you'll find when you go to the website that there is actually a note that says that you may find, depending on how they were shipped to you, that when you get them, that some of them could be melted out of shape. Uh, the high heat of some delivery vehicles can easily go in excess of 100 degrees Fahrenheit and at that temperature they will start to get soft and go out of shape. Well, the package that I received, six of the seven bars were misshapen. They were kind of melted into clumps inside of their bag. Now that wasn't a problem because they don't leak out. The bags are well sealed and uh, well I'll talk more about that in a second but only one of the bars actually was in its original shape. Now. Just to let you know, what I did with each of the bars, because Robert talks about being able to do this on the website, is I just took each of the bars and I put them in a double boiler, which was just a small pot of water with another uh, metal bowl on top of that, and melted the clumps of brick until they were soft, didn't take very much, and then poured them into silicone muffin tins and that's what I came up with. So this is one of the other flavors and you can see what I did. It was just put it in a silicone muffin tin, let them cool, pop them out, and then I took each of them and vacuum sealed them with my food saver. And uh, yeah, so the, each one of these smaller ones is half the size, and I weigh them just to be sure, half the size of the full size. So that would be a 500 calorie uh, brick right there and uh, you know that's not a bad thought you don't have to open and eat the whole thing you can divide them up into whatever size you want and then eat them as you go in fact that's probably what I like about this is uh, this can be a, uh, an energy bar on the trail it could be a half meal replacement to enhance another meal that I may want uh, yeah so each of the flavors let's open this one up and take a look at it I'll talk a little bit more about 
the ingredients as I do. So once again, I have not opened this one up. I have not tasted this one. I like the smell. I think even this one is slightly misshapen. Yeah, just a little bit. So there's what the brick looks like and you can see it got a little out of shape there. Now, these have been in my pack all day today and it's running about 27 degrees Celsius. So these are hard and firm. There's no softness to these at all. So I'd say at most temperatures, uh, maybe upwards of 35 degrees at the most, they'll stay solid. After that, they will start to get soft. Uh, but at this point, they're still in pretty good shape. So this is the mocha cream, and I wanted to taste this one for you just to give you a little idea of, of what it's all about. So they are quite hard. You can cut them, you can bite them. Most people just pick them up and... Mm. Okay. We'll talk about the ingredients in a second and why these are healthy. But let's just talk about the flavor first and the texture. So what I've discovered, and this is true of all of the bars, is they have a common texture. Pretty much all of them have exactly the same texture. It's not super creamy like a chocolate bar, but neither is it, is it super granular. There is a, a bit of a powdery, but at the same time creamy texture that goes with them. And that's true of all seven of the bars, now that I've tasted the last one. There is some commonality in flavor, and it has to do with some of the things that are used in the making of these bars. Uh, and, well, let, let's put it this way. They're good, but they're not great. This is not something that I would reach for as a treat. It's not a snack, it's not a dessert, it's not a candy bar by any means. At the same time, they're better than just palatable. They're tasty, just not great. So I guess it kind of depends. If you're okay with that flavor, which is great, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not being negative on them. It's just, I want to manage your expectations. Don't look at these as some kind of a dessert bar. This is a meal replacement that is good tasting, just not great tasting. And that's about the, the best way I can describe it. Each of them have some unique flavors to them based on the names, of course, but they also have some common flavors. There is one common flavor that I'm not a fan of in all of these, and I think it's the stevia. And the stevia is the artificial sweetener that Robert has chosen to use to add to this. And I haven't been a fan of stevia in my other tasting and other things that have been made with it. Um, for me, stevia has an aftertaste that stays with me that I'm not a fan of. It's not a bad flavor, it's just I don't like the lingering flavor taste in my mouth from the stevia. And that's what's used to sweeten all of these bars. Not a bad thing, it just, it's personal preference, I think. Let me have another taste of this. This is my lunch today, by the way. Mm. I got to read the in ingredients because there's something in this. Okay, the writing is pretty fine, but let me read this one to you. If you're interested in the information on each of the bars, of course, I'm going to provide the information in the video description where you can go and order these on um, st uh, the website. And by the way, uh, Robert and Crystal have a YouTube channel of their own known as Live Savage, which of course I'm going to provide a link to in the show notes so that you can see more about what they do because it's not just Keto Brick. But for each of the bars, they have full descriptions with all the ingredients and the complete nutritional breakdown on the website. So if you're looking to make your decisions about which one you want to try, um, interesting, they have recipes of how you can use these bars to make other things with. Maybe some desserts, maybe some meals. It's kind of interesting. All right, let's just go through this bar. So this bar has 90 grams of fat. 58 of that is saturated fat, zero trans fats, zero cholesterol. 790 milligrams of sodium. It has 
16 grams of carbohydrates. And I know that's going to sound high, but you have to appreciate 12 of those 16 grams are dietary fiber. None of it is from sugar because there's no sugar at it and there's no sugar in this. 31 grams of protein. And in total, that comes up to 1,000 calories. Okay, so the ingredients are raw organic cacao butter, plant-based protein. In this case, it is pea protein. And a few others. There is a chocolate mocha flavor, cocoa, stevia leaf extract, uh, guar gum, and a few others. And those would be the binders. Monk fruit extract, which is what I prefer to use, sea salt, golden flax seed meal, ground coffee beans. All right, that's what I'm, I'm coming up against. I, I, I thought it was uh, cocoa nibs. All right. So there was some little hard dark specks inside of the bar, and I wasn't sure what it was. And it turns out that it is cocoa nibs and uh, coffee, right? And there could be some added sea salt as well. So once again, you can get all the, all the information on their website for these. So what do I think about them? Um, overall, I think it is a great product for its intended purpose. It is not something that I would look forward to eating, but it's something I wouldn't mind eating. I like that I can melt them and make them into smaller bars. I like that it is shelf stable. It has a shelf life on average of a, up to a year and a half. A few of them are shorter and they'll, they'll make note of that on each individual bar because it depends on what has been added. I think the peanut, ones with peanut butter have a shorter shelf life. But overall, it's not a bad product. Uh, that's what I can say about it. So, if you have any experience yourself with the Keto Brick, I'd be interested in hearing about that. If you know of any good alternatives to the Keto Brick, then I'd be interested in hearing that as well. If you're going to try them, let me know uh, because I'm interested in knowing what you think of them. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about the Keto Brick. Again, all the information will be in the video description below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference.